because it's critical. But Lord, we don't want to be religious. We just shake off any of that stuff. This is about the deep relationship we have with you. Heart to heart. Open the deepest part of us now. We open it to you that you can pour in your word. Amen. Okay, we're going to have some scriptures to read here. You want? Let me just hand this to you. And we're going to do that. How many got the ping? Okay, did you watch it? Did you read, watch, read the scriptures, watch the video? Okay, good. Um, on being Caleb, how do you like this picture? <laughs> okay, well, there's always a question about a comfort level. So let's just say that this is you. Okay, right? You're the light bulb, you got that? Okay, so what's your comfort level in this scenario? Huh? Comfortable, right? Very comfortable, right? Okay, good. What about, that one's good. What about this? No? Maybe okay, right? Okay, well, then what about this? See, uh, well, uh, this is about on being Caleb, right? Caleb, right? We talked about this before. We're in the fifth biblical month, right? The month of Av. This was the month. You got to bear this in mind. This was the month they were supposed to step over into the promise and take it. You get that. This is the time. Five is linked with grace. There was grace all over it for them to just step over and do it, and instead they didn't, right? They rebelled. But Caleb comes through this because Caleb is willing to stand up. And Caleb, we talked about last week, that root from the Hebrew means what? Dog, right? Okay, good dog, yeah, mad dog, Arr, okay? But it can also mean wholehearted, okay? Because leb is heart. Caleb, okay, wholehearted, all hearted. And God really commends him for saying there's a different spirit in him, right? And it's interesting because God was stirring a lot of things in me. Um, shout out to one of our allies, Ralph, who sent me replays. A couple of, he talked about him, and I said, send me those links. And one was Eric Metaxas, and the other was Cheon, and Cheon, whom I've met and talked with. And man, they really stirred some things in me. And I thought, okay, God, what are you doing? How is this connected? And he just brought me back to Caleb. So we're going to read through a number of these scriptures just because I want to tee this up. You good with this? Okay. Who's got Mike? You ready there, sir? Numbers 14. Can you read that from there? But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of... Yeah. Go ahead, try. <laughs> Don't worry, nobody else can say it either. Okay. Jeff and that. Who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the generations of the children of Israel, saying, The land we passed through to, to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. All good, right? That's being Caleb. You got that? Okay. You know what you know. Hold on, there's one more. You know what you know, right? You know He knows what he saw, right? Very clear. He saw it. He was really clear. He saw the land. He saw the giants. There's no question. But he also knows what he believes. And that twofold thing makes up most of the believers, the followers of Jesus. We know pretty clearly what we're seeing and we know what we believe, but that's where it stops. The difference is what? Caleb speaks. How many people is he speaking to, just by the way, round numbers? couple of million, they suspect, 600,000 men from the census that was done, okay? 
and just by the math of how that works in family sizes, you're talking about two million. But let's just put that. Let's just say it's only six hundred thousand. <laughs> he wasn't afraid to speak in public. Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. So that's about being Caleb. But this is the other part, please. And all the oops, sorry. And all the uh, congregation said to stone them with stones. Okay. Does the story end there? It it doesn't. Okay. What happens next? Do you know? The glory shows up at the temple. Okay. God's God's going to make a stand. But in the midst of that, or like being Stephen, right, when he's doing that confrontation in Acts. Okay. Now, the glory of God doesn't appear to everybody, but it appears to him. Right. And he could see the heavens open. But you're getting right. We're just, I'm just giving context. Okay, who's next? Penny, are we going back there? Okay, good. Oops. You ready? God's message came to me, son of man, speak to your people. Tell them, if I bring war on this land and the people take care, take one of their citizens and make him their watchman. And if the watchman sees war coming and blows the trumpet, warning the people, then if anyone hears the sound of the trumpet and ignores it, and war comes and takes him off, it's his own fault. He heard the alarm, he ignored it. It's his own fault. If he had listened, he would have saved his life. But if the watchman sees war coming and doesn't blow the trumpet, warning the people, and war comes and takes anyone off, I'll hold the watchman responsible for the bloodshed of any unwarned sinners. You know this verse, right? You know the passage? Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah. Can you see it? You can stand up. Is it on? Yeah, it should be on. Rescuing the perishing. Don't okay. hesitate. Go a little bit louder, kiddo. Okay. Rescuing the perishing. Don't hesitate to step in and help. If you say, hey, that's none of my business, will you get off the hook? Someone is watching you closely, you know. Someone not impressed with weak excuses. It's a message translation. Okay, most of you would be knowing it as if you see someone stumbling towards death, and you say, "I didn't see." Yeah, that's right. Yeah, spirit will repeat himself just to make sure we're clear. Okay, next Matthew five. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glory, glorify your Father in heaven. Yeah. You remember the children's song? This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, boom, 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 this is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Okay, well, you do remember the words. You don't really know how to sing them, but what's the, what's the next one? Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine, okay? So the bushel business is flourishing. It's flourishing. You know, if the enemy can't kill you, they'll just cover you. Busyness, fear, political correctness, fear. Who's got the next one? Okay. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. Or so did the, their fathers to the false prophets. It's pretty clear, right? Let me give you another translation. Esther, read this one. There is trouble ahead when you live only for the approval of others, saying, what flatters them, doing what indulges them. Popularity contests are not true contests. Look how many scoundrel preachers were approved by your ancestors. 
<laughs> your, um, your task is to be true, not popular. You ready there, Martha? Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Wonderful, huh? You ready for the next verse? I didn't give you this one ahead of time. No, keep, keep hold on to it, Martha. It's still you. I just, I just paused because everybody wants to be in this glow, which is good. We should be in the glow. You've got to see, be part of the, I make all things new, right? We're going to connect back to that again. But then you've got to get the next line. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Is it kind of stunning the first word that he starts with? Okay. Cowardly. Che on when he was talking about some things, he came, he referenced this passage. And uh, I went and looked at different translations and stuff, and some might say fearful, but if you go to it, it's about, it's connecting cowardly and unbelieving are connecting there. Fearfuls of persecution, so then they turn away from the faith. So they don't believe. Martha, you can turn that off. We're good now. You okay? Those are some heavy scriptures, but I want to just bring those in the room because the Lord ultimately needs to direct what you do or don't do. But we always want to bring you back to the word and let him move from there, okay? So let me back up because I feel that this issue about who and how we are. Have you gotten the clear message you're supposed to speak out? Okay. Don't hide your light under a bushel, on and on. Somebody or something or a nation is stumbling. Don't sit back and go, well, not really my affair. What can I do, right? There's a challenge thrown to us. But I want to come back again. Vision the Lord gave me on the 1st of March back in um, 2012. Spike went into that front yard, and when it went down, it sprung open these streams and from there the spike is no longer there but these are some of these streams that we believe flow from what God is doing prophecy intercession inner healing deliverance teaching and training healing and harvest justice and it's all about transformation and discipleship right that's just part of what he's doing and releasing here but what's become real key to me are these headwaters if you didn't see that, please watch that. Not because it's that I'm any good as a presenter, because I still am so rough with it. But the core of it is real important, okay? Because if we are going to be speaking, if we're going to be out, you have to know what you're holding on to. Because in part, that's what motivates you. In part, that's what guides you. In parts, that's what controls you. We, Kim just broke off the fear of public speaking. But some of you need to set a guard, oh Lord, over my mouth. Because what you speak sometimes is just not life. Okay? Shelly, um, if you, do you have a long comment? We can get you the microphone or just one quick thing. What do you got? Oh, okay, got it. Right <laughs> my hand, okay. So, what we covered was these three couplets, grace and truth, honor and hope, worship and warfare. Yeah, you remember that? So we're going to go back because 
as much as I've talked about this, I need us all to get this down in the deepest level, okay? First chapter of John, twice in a matter of four verses, it talks about Jesus full of grace and truth. And years ago, the Lord gave me a prophetic word and showed me how it's like a live wire where one hand holds grace and the other holds truth. And if you're unwilling to hold both, right, it's not going to connect. And they're ends of a charged wire, and we always have to grab onto both and hold both. And too often in the church, we let go of one or we let go of the other. Okay? Now, the reality is, if you really grab hold of it, what's going to happen to you? Well, it's going to feel a little bit like this almost every time. And folks, I can tell you, virtually every time when there's some new area, you've been holding on to a lot of grace, or maybe you've been holding on to truth, and you just haven't really wanted to bring God into it, or you haven't wanted to confront that issue, the first time you do, it will light you up pretty good. Because God's got to burn off all that stuff, right? But this isn't the end of the story, right? You've got to be willing. Jesus says, if you do not pick up your cross, how often? Daily. Okay? If you seek to save your life, your soul, you're going to lose it, right? You've got to be willing to let that die, let that come off, so that you can then move into this state. Because when we're this way and we have grace and truth coming in, then we vibrate with this life. It pulses in us. And folks, if we're going to be connecting more or speaking out more, engaging more of the world in the midst of what's going on, whether it's in prayer, conversation, intercession, whatever it is, you have got to hold both of those. You've got to look at all the brass tack facts that are out there. And right now, that's a challenge. You're going to have to do some work. Okay? Don't just hear about so and so and this is a problem. You, you go and do some research and be careful the sources that you look at. Get to the facts. Someone tells you a story, say, okay, where did that come from? Where did you hear it? Because when it gets told about four directions down, it's now suddenly, I caught a fish this big, right? It's just the way that it works. Looks like Christy's stick, it does. And so the question comes, will we let him really light us up, okay? But you gotta keep going back to this. Every time, every conversation, whatever God is pushing, pulling you into, am I holding on to grace and truth? Am I holding on to grace and truth? I'm just all ticked off. Okay, wait a minute, am I holding grace and truth? What's the fullness? How does he see this? Now, the other way to see it is this way. I showed you the pipeline, right? One is grace and the other is truth. And provided they're this size, you've got a really great flow, right? The problem is a lot of times our truth factor is only down to that. And when we do that, it constrains how much grace we can relieve, receive, and it just shrinks down. And so the level of life going through you, well, you might as well just be under a bushel anyway. Right? Come on you're not holding on to enough grace the truth of the matter is you deserve to be dead correct and one of the things wonderful about us going into the prison each week right is you're just always aware oh but for the grace of god there am i bad decision here i mean i deserve this as far as what jesus said if you've even looked this way or thought hated your brother I mean, we have guys, a lot of guys we deal with in there that are up for murder. Well, I can't have any superiority over that. That's, I deserve that. But I got to keep the truth factor. And when you're missing and you have a problem grasping the truth, let me just give you the key. Just ask for more grace. Lord, give me the grace to embrace the truth. And what it does is then it expands that other ability. See, a lot of you have been unwilling to look at certain things in truth because you've never been in a context where it was okay. You thought as soon as you brought that up, you were going to be judged and dismissed or, oh, well, you can't come back here. You da 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 Kim and I are so far over what we hear about as far as being shocked. It's kind of like, okay. You know, there's no, there's no need in us to be in judgment. It's like, that's how the enemy's gone after you. 
you made an agreement with him and now you you've already paid the price we don't need to make you feel worse than you feel and so we provide that grace and so a lot of people feel like wow i really can be more myself here i don't have to pose i don't have to play church i can show up right that's so much of what we do is god's created an atmosphere in here of grace and truth you get okay we just want to encourage you to do that. It'll look different for each of you. But where is that being set up? How is that flowing? We good on that? And then I got to go back to this. You know, this is the lie about the truth. You can't handle the truth. That is what the enemy will try to tell you again and again and again. You can't, you don't want to go there. You don't want to look at it. You don't want to think about it. You want to be there. No, I can handle the truth. Why? Because the grace will be more. Okay? I'm not looking at it outside of the full grace of God to receive it. And now that goes for this nation and the craziness that's going on. Do not hide from the truth of what's happening. You got to dig deeper to see what's happening. Now, you don't need to fill your head all the time with that stuff because that will just, because you've got to, parse out the truth from what's being told you because there's a lot of people out there that feel you can't handle the truth so i'll give you this version of it yeah hello okay <laughs> seeing some nods and then there's this two sides right hope is that one thing hope is connected with honor but hope has two dimensions to it. One is about reconciliation. We've been given this ministry of reconciliation. And the other is the restoration of all things. That Revelation 21. Behold, I make all things new. We have got to hold that very clearly in the midst of the craziness now. Yes? Hello? You've got to know that your time here, for however long it or short it is, you got much more ahead of you and it's a restored and renewed earth and it's uh, anyway don't get me started on that one because it's really you know and again i'm going to go back and connect again with our guys in prison there are guys in there that are serving life without one guy if he got that's what his sentence but if for some reason something went strange florida's got the same sentence waiting for him that's it how do you decide to live them? Because we've talked about the hope that's before him, that restored earth. Where do you want to go then? I've asked him, where are we going to meet? <laughs> you know, he got transferred to another prison, so I haven't, we connect by email. I'm allowed to do that now that he's in a different prison. But it's like, I have hope for that and for our friendship, connecting then. So let me just hit three things. One, hope here is a noun. Say a noun. It's a tangible thing. It's a tangible thing. It's a real thing, okay? Now, it's a noun that then moves into a verb, right? Hope is something also that we do. But first, it is about the noun. The hope of reconciliation is the fact that through the blood of Jesus, he has broken down all the barriers of enmity. First, between us and who? God the Father, right? So we reconcile people to God. That's part of the connect. But then it's people to people. This is part of the mandate. You've got to understand, part of what's going on in the nation represents some of God's deep heart for reconciliation. It gets hijacked in all sorts of crazy places, but you have to get that the racism is tied to anti-Semitism, is tied to the Antichrist spirit. His throne is based on justice and righteousness. If you think God isn't like, okay, but then there's a squirrely stuff that gets in there. Okay? But be reconciled. Reconciliation is of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Right? Not peacekeepers, peacemakers. Ones that can come in and bring peace things together you following me so far so that's hope the other side is honor and that has two parts to it as well right we honor the creator and who and what he has created 
And this is so key because when you're in the midst of stuff and you see it going crazy and you're very tempted to judge and accuse and label and brand, stop it. You're allowed to be upset. You're allowed to be very concerned with the behaviors that are going on. We are not allowed to judge the heart of that person. And labels are the quick way. Oh, they're the quick way. It's just a so-and-so. Oh, okay, that means he's a piece of crap, basically, in your eyes. You know, I had this conversation with somebody just recently. He was trying to talk about somebody's behavior, but it was moving into labeling them that. It's one thing to say someone has lied to you. It's another to call them a liar. One is dealing with their behavior. The other is judging. Okay. We honor the creator and who and what he has created. Now, let me make sure we're clear on this. He has, there's a lot of stuff out there he does not created. Now, that would be around ideas, structures, other things. But there ain't a person out there he hasn't created. And the grace and truth is, is that, you know, why were you born you here and now? Why were you born this gender, this race, this country, etc.? Why couldn't you have been another, a different? You have your own struggles, but maybe what if you had those struggles instead? It's the same blood that got you here would get anybody here. But there has to be a dignity in there. We have to see them as someone for whom Christ died first. And I don't care politically where you are. And this is what so grieves me, whether it's about Nancy Pelosi or Donald Trump or whoever else is the lightning rod at the time, right? It's just like, you can't, you can't go there, folks. You can't hold that in your heart. You can be very upset about things they do, things they say. You can be shocked, whatever else. You are not allowed to judge them. Anybody doubt that biblically? Okay, I'm... I'm Maybe being a little bit strong here. But we see what happens is when that happens, then it, it filters and flavors all the rest of the conversation. It filters your prayers. You now go ahead and go to war and pray for that person's soul, for their complete and genuine salvation, and that they be saturated with the Holy Spirit. Pretty tough to do when you just wrote them off as an X, Y, Z. I mean, we got to keep engaging whoever it is with visualizing Jesus right next to him, watching us talk about him. Really? Would you, you know? And this is on all bearings of the compass. If we are a believer, okay. now there's legitimate stuff we got it that needs to be addressed. But how we do this you got it? So hope is one side, honor is the other. And the only reason that you can rightfully have hope is because there's an honor that he created and he's going to make it new. Do you get it? It all fits together. Again, hope and honor are two of these things you've got to hold on. And when you're dishonoring someone, then you're not really holding on to the hope. Worship and warfare, the other one. We talked about this. It's all of us engaging him. When we're in the midst of this, how is your heart for worship? How, how is, are you in a connection with him? It's really hard to be connected with him and then foul mouth somebody else. Now, just so we're clear, John the Baptist, Elijah, others, there's plenty to be said. Just so we're clear, right? It's the heart. It's the attitude. Is it done truly out of a deep connection to the Father and a respect and dignity for them? But out of that, they're stumbling to death, and so you are required to speak and pray into it. Do you get that? I see too many people whose souls just get poisoned, and it's happening all over the place. And the church can't allow that to happen. By this will all men know you are my disciples, that you have the right theology, a big church building, an adequate budget. That's not in your Bible? 
I'm sorry, by this will all men know that you are my disciples by your love for one another. Okay. Wow, okay. Now, love can have a real hard edge to it, just so we're clear, right? Nobody doubts that. We are not talking about Jesus as Mr. Rogers with a beard, okay? We're talking about the guy who took the whips in too, okay? Who said to the scribes, you brood of vipers, you snakes, you whitewashed tomb, right? Okay, there's times. But it was trying to get them to move off where they were. All of us engaging all of God, and when we align with the kingdom, then we break alignments with the darkness. This is really key. If we are going to speak boldly, if we are going to be boldly in a context, we cannot be trafficking in the garbage of the enemy. And all the stuff we've talked about, if you're holding grace and truth, if you're holding hope and honor, it's going to be real hard for you to traffic in anything of the enemy. Do you get? Because he's going to be trying to like, you can't handle the truth. Yes, I can. It may hurt. Or you're just a scumbag. Yeah, maybe so, but I got the grace for it. So I'm more than that. I'm a son. I'm beloved. I'm cherished. You know, you speak out of that, and you speak with a confidence the reason that a lot of people right now, there's so many words going on because most of them aren't worth listening because you can tell the spirit out of which it's spoken. Wow. <laughs> you can tell when someone speaks in authority. Okay. Because there's something more there. It's bigger than them. Therefore, all genuine worship is warfare. All warfare must have worship at its core. And that means any engagement of stuff of the enemy, right, that's going around. And that means it will manifest in and things, in people, in circumstances, in what's going on in the nation. It's what's going on around. We just, just earlier today got a call out of left field and just the enemy is just try to completely take somebody out and that's not going to happen now i can tell you that you agree okay but the enemy is just focused and we have to be in response scotty did you Amen. Amen. Yeah. What Scotty was saying, because I wouldn't be able to hear you on the on Facebook, is that what God's been bringing to her is that need for daily repentance and getting cleaned up again, and that the church has lost that ability. I happen to think that's hugely important. It's part of, of what I do every morning with the Lord. I mean, it's just... And you know, however it can work for you, but you've got to be willing just to, again, I lay hold of the truth because I want the grace, okay? I am not trying to self-flagellate. He already gets it. Let me just bring it out on the table instead of like trying to, what's behind your back? Nothing. What do you got behind there? Nothing. What's in the other hand? Nothing, you know? Actually, it was nothing in my hand second time, right? <laughs> right? I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I've done and what I've not done, that I have not loved you with all of my heart. I haven't loved my neighbor as myself. I've leaned on my own understanding. I've been wise in my own eyes. I've been afraid of things and people and circumstances rather than only honoring you. That covers a blanket, but then I go into, and I repent and renounce, coming into agreement, and then I go through stuff. You gotta let him search you, know, just, just get it cleaned out. Because the healing of the land is contingent on everybody in the land repenting, right? No, it's not. It's not. If my people, my people, not the people, my people, the church, the church 
my people who call on my name. Wow, you've already segregated it down. One, those who are his who call on his name will humble themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked way, right? We're the ones right now for this assignment. We've got to daily make sure we're going in repentance. Don't, don't worry that you did it. You had to repent for the same thing yesterday. He's not shocked. Sorry, you okay with this? Okay. So warfare is the context of the time because the prince of the power of the air is so at work. Jesus called him the ruler of this age. So we don't go in with fear, but we go in with complete awareness. Worship and warfare. You got it? Okay. So... Think of it as two coin, uh, as a coin with two sides. The Lamb of God and the Lion of Judah. They are are these connected? They are indeed. You can't separate like like this is two sides of one coin. You're getting this right? Okay. And then we have grace on one and we got truth on the other. You got to hold them both. You are not really operating in grace if you're not holding on to truth. And then you have hope and you have honor. And again, there are two sides of it. They need to be connected. And then finally you have worship and warfare. Does that make sense? And this is what I'm just calling kingdom currency. For us, because I feel like when we go out, you're going to be spending something. (laughs) If you can be spending this, right? If you can be connected with that let those things hold you as you hold them this isn't rocket science is it hello is it rocket science you got this okay i may have some of these made up for you just so you can carry it around and then how many of you watched the video okay if you didn't brief thing five minutes um catalyst leaders is something that um, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm part of the thing as far as getting updates and stuff from them. You know what Catalyst is? Annual conference, big kind of thing. But they have something specifically for leaders, and they'll send out sometimes these these snippets from videos from past presentation. And this woman here, Christy Wright, was talking about there's something extraordinary waiting for you on the other side of what fear. Right, your fear is there. There's something extraordinary waiting for you there, but it's getting to the other side is up to you. You don't have to feel courageous to be courageous. In fact, if you feel courageous, you may be that you're not. <laughs> you're just deluded. <laughs> right? Because if you're in the situation of a real cause of fear, okay? She goes and talks about fear is not an uh, abnormal thing. But even if you don't feel courageous to be courageous, you just do it scared. Say, do it scared. scared. Say, "Do do it scared. Fear isn't a sign that you're doing something bad. It's that you're doing something bold. The righteous are supposed to be as bold as a lion. Oh, there's that other side of that coin in there, right? You have to be able to incorporate the lion and the lamb, right? The lamb is necessary because it's all by the blood. It reminds us again the truth of who we are and the grace that he's met us there. But that there's more to that. I have saved you so that you will go and be my witnesses into all the world. You're scared because something is on the line. What you're looking to do matters. Do you, this is real important. A lot of times we're not afraid because the stuff we want to do just really doesn't matter. You know that little checklist you love to go through? Just check off a whole lot of things. Feels good. Any of you like to do that? 
they drill us about that in business, right? In that you got to be careful because those little to-do lists, what they can do is you can piddle their whole day away because usually we put the big things down somewhere we just don't want to really deal with. So we do all these little nothing things and feel like we've accomplished something. Now, meanwhile, we get up and that big thing is still sitting there. Right? It just is awful. And so in business, one of the things I learned about eat your vegetables first, right? As a kid, I always tried to push my vegetables off, right? I think Levi learned this thing fairly early. You got something really ugly on the plate, eat it first and get it done with. Now you can enjoy the rest of the meal, correct? Yeah, remember? You used to just do some of that. Because otherwise, you know what happens? You push that stuff around your plate. How many of you did this as kids? And you're trying to eat the rest of it, but you just keep looking at that stuff, right? Oh, can't have it touch the mashed potatoes. Can't have those peas touch the thing. I was notorious for that. I was really good at hiding peas. <laughs> or feeding some to the dog. I even one time said, uh, well, I think I'm done. I'm going to go out and play. Oh, you haven't finished your peas. I'll finish them. I, I shoveled them all into my mouth, went outside and spit them all into the yard. I was good. You know what? Sometimes we got to eat the vegetables first. You got to get the stuff you don't want to do out of the way. And a lot of times what the enemy will do, the reason he's on your back about something is because it matters. Because if it really doesn't matter, he's just great with you doing that. Oh, hey, yeah. Just run around that for a long time. How many times you want to go around that same mountain again? You okay with this? So the question of who you are, or maybe the better question is whose you are. See, the reality is in both of these cases, they both have the wiring. If I had to use this as a metaphor, that first bulb is saved. Now that line in Revelation 21 is a little scary about the cowards and unbelief. Yeah. But we're called to be that, but even more, we're going to be this. That's Caleb. That was Stephen. And you know what? You're not guaranteed which one of those results comes out. You get it, right? What is God calling you to do? Would you agree the nation's on the brink? I think most people are just afraid to even say what they think and feel. Because the labels have been passed around and there's no civil conversation. And we are just looking to just tag and bag and dismiss someone so quickly. And so because of that, we're often afraid. And that's a danger, because if you see someone stumbling towards death, you can't say, ah. Whatever happens with this nation over the next few months, and it is over the next few months, we are all accountable for what we have or haven't done, what we have or haven't said. Just so we're clear, right? But we're accountable for the spirit in which we do it. Yeah, I can do this, I can do that, I can give my body up to be burned, but if I have not love, I'm nothing. Where is the heart? Hold grace and truth. Hold the hope and honor. Hold the worship and the warfare. See, these things light us up, but they also direct us. They show us. That's part of the core DNA of this headwater. Tipping point is now. There's been a lot of prophetic words out there. I haven't heard the words as much as I've just seen the first line, the tipping point. I believe this is right. I was born in 57. Okay, it tells you how old I am now. Oh. I remember the 60s pretty well in the craziness because of where we lived. We lived in Detroit, living up to the race riots. 
My dad was a pastor at Berkeley Covenant Church in 65, 6, and 7. Just a really wild time there. Then we moved to Chicago. For those of you who know history, the Democratic National Convention happened there. Huge riots. The SDS, the Weathermen, universities were getting bombed, University of Wisconsin, other places. My alma mater at UC Santa Barbara was one of the worst hot spots. I mean, it was just, just crazy. And that was, that was an intense time. I have very vivid memories of that. And this, this is beyond that. Because I've never seen the nation so divided. And the problem is, is we seem to have lost the ability to really talk. But we do not war against what? We do not war against what? Blood against principalities, powers, and the spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly realms. You got to be clear, right? There's a lot of stuff going on in that second heaven. Scripturally, first heaven is, is what you see, the earth, the atmosphere kind of thing, right? Third heaven is where God is. Paul talks about being lifted up into the third heaven. Well, he says, a man, I shall, you know, anyway, it's Paul, right? And there, and we know though there's there's war in the heavenlies, so it, it implies this second level where stuff is just going on, and it is churning, and it is churning, and it is churning, and the Lord says, "If my people who are called by my name," so it comes on for us. What is your commitment to pray right now? I'm serious, guys. If, if, if you knew that come in November, now you're very aware, right? Things are not going to be over in November. R regardless, regardless how it works, there's, I mean, this is, this is a very intense time we're walking into. But we're not to be afraid, but we are to be aware. You get this? Okay. Will we be as Caleb? Caleb, where we know what we see, we know what we believe, and then we speak. And the speaking may be out into with other people, engaging in real conversation, whether they love you, whether they like you or not. Go in with the right heart and attitude. This is a war. Now, Jesus, when he sends out the 70, he gives them a command, a twofold command. He says, you need to be cunning as serpents and pure as doves. There's another one of those tensions. Get this? Word is full of them. You got it, two ends of the wire. You got to be smart. You got to be cunning. You got to be a cunning warrior. Jesus was a cunning warrior, but he was pure. His motives weren't mixed. He didn't let loose that thing about you brood of vipers out of just being pissed off. It was specific. It was targeted. He was, and he needed them to respond because he's ultimately trying to find those who are like Nicodemus and willing at least to come at night and deal with the truth. Cunning and pure. Will we be true watchmen and call out the warning? Are we doing that enough with each other? Is it happening in the church? Is it being called for out of the pulpits? I was watching something recently and I just, I had to pull back. A church was watching part of it and it was all fine, but it was like, we're in a war. And it felt like it was just kind of like church as usual. And I was like, oh Lord. I don't, I don't, this is critical. The life of the nation, the hope of freedom is on the line. There is a serious question now. The danger of moving into a socialist state is real. And you have to discern between the noise. So, okay, we'll keep going. What part of the light are, are you hiding or not, right? I showed you those anchor verses just to make sure we're clear. This is not me trying to come heavy on you. This is in the word. Anybody get, yeah, you go, right? 
Our task is to be true, not popular. Right? That was the restatement about woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so they spoke of the false prophets. I have a friend one time said, I, every relationship I've ever had is, is fine, has ended well. And I thought, oh boy, there's a danger in that. Because if you really are speaking truth into the situation with grace, you're going to have people, either, there's something else you're doing. <laughs> you're either pulling things back or you're deluded about how that left. But something's... And we have to traffic in the currency of the kingdom. Right? Grace, truth, hope, honor, worship, and warfare, the lion and the lamb. If we embody that, then we go to it, right? And then we speak. We speak, we can speak the truth in love. And again, I don't know who said it. I heard it third hand somewhere. It's not my saying, but if we don't speak the truth in love, we aren't speaking truth. You may be putting facts out there, but it's not truth because you're missing the deeper context. I have to speak it, but I got to speak it in love. There's got to be a redemptive restoration. I have a hope of reconciling, reconciliation and the hope of restoration. And I'm honoring the creator and what he's created. Hmm, that's going to ground me, but I have to still speak. Decisions are made by those who show up. This quote has been referenced everybody from Benjamin Franklin to uh, Harriet Truman to uh, Woody Allen to uh, President Bartlett, the fictitious president in West Wing. <laughs> I don't know who said it. I don't care. It's right. Decisions are made by those who show up. Everybody has got to be getting everybody to vote. You've got to get the biblical standards Okay. This can't be about us. This can't be about a personality contest. It can't be about so many things. It has to be about his word. It's got to be about grace and truth. My goodness, I just, some of the things President Trump says just embarrass the crap out of me. I'm just like, I can't. I can't believe there's so many things. Oh, Lord, why? But he's honoring Israel. And in the word it says, I will bless those who bless Israel. And I will curse those. So I got to go okay. And he, yeah. And we know lives Black lives do matter. Without, oh man, <laughs> there's a deep issue we have to resolve. But it's all black lives matter. That includes the unborn. And there are more black unborn lives that are ended than any other in this nation. Our heart is, is not about clamping down women. If you know me, it's the dignity of women is so key. You have to rightly honor who God has created and why he created them. But I got to then honor those that are the weakest and most vulnerable. Now, I need you to know too, the issues of justice and righteousness are all here. You have got to go before the Lord, but you've got to get it done, and you have to be willing to speak about it. Because there's a place here for everybody out there. I don't care what issues they are, if they're coming in here, right? If they're coming and seeking Jesus, they got a place here. Everybody here's got a boatload of issues. Would you agree? Everybody here, if we had a spiritual x-ray and there was a screen like you go through the, uh, have you ever taken a quick look when you go through the, uh, the security at, at the airport and you can see the x-ray thing of stuff? Looks pretty interesting. Let's just say there's a spiritual x-ray and before you walk in, you stand there for a second and the results of your spiritual problems get flashed up on a screen so everybody can see it. 
How many of you are going to come back? Well, you're, you're a masochist, so I know you, you, you... Yeah, yeah. So I don't care what this struggle is. Again, I love when we're able to pray us back into the prison with the COVID thing being locked out. I miss those guys. I, uh, but you know, in there, what part of the beauty of it is, is you just, whatever they dealt with, whatever they are dealing with, that's not the issue. If they come loving Jesus, we start from there. And the fact that my issue is fear and there is lust or something like that, okay, whatever. They're confused about this. I'm confused about that. Okay, let's just get together. So you have to do and dig in. You have to discern the difference between the movement of trying to get attention to how crazy it's been in this nation with racism from an organization called Black Lives Matter. But you can't hear about it from me or somebody else. You need to go on the website and look at the purpose statements and then go, okay, is this biblical or not? That's where you go. This is always, this is always your test, not me. This. And then when you see it, you go, okay, wow. And then you pray for them. Okay? And I don't care where it is. And you know you have to risk what we say being labeled as hateful. You know, there's just so many things about that. And it, it's painful. Let's talk about just the issue of homosexuality. I've had very, very dear friends who are gay. One of them, like I was one of the only people who knew it, you know, was in the workplace. Great guy, good friendship, really respected his work ethic and everything. And I've had many, I've sold many homes to gay couples, lesbian couples. And it's like, care for them. Love them, honor them, intelligent, articulate. I mean, now, do I think there's an issue? That, absolutely, because male and female, he created them in the image of God. There's something very holy, therefore, we believe in gender. That it's reflecting the image of God. So I think that's something that when you come to Jesus, he's going to want to talk to you about. But that's really going to be his job. I mean, what is your primary identity? It better not be as this party or that party. It better not even be that you're an American or you're a Brit or you're whatever, right? Your first foremost thing is what? You're a kingdom citizen. You're a blood-bought son or daughter of the king. That's it. That's your identity. Everything else becomes subservient for that. So somebody wants to come in and deal with this, let's go over the scripture together. But the question is, what is your identity? Is it specifically in that about the gender issue or about the race issue or education or class or this or politics? Or is it that you are passionate, connected to Jesus? And then the rest of it, okay. Let's talk. Let's go into this. Frank's, Francis Chan did a talk on this thing, and he says, you know, if this said, you know, Francis Chan, right, Chinese guy, he says, you know, if this said that all Chinese get men to be saved have to stand on their head, I'm going to stand on my head. Do I think that's discriminatory? I don't care. I'm going to, I want Jesus. If he says that's what I got to do, then Okay. You know, we have to come somewhere with it. We have to be able to care deeply for people and not judge them. But if they get reconciled to God through Jesus, then let, let let's Jesus, do you get that?
Um, Cheon spoke at his, uh, Cheon, you, how many of you know Cheon? Okay. Really neat guy. Um, we spoke one time at the same thing at, at uh, Glory of Zion, and uh, he sat next to Kim, and he's just very engaging, easy guy to be with. And he oversees, I don't know how many churches in the U.S., but he also oversees churches over 70 different countries. Just a neat guy, and he's just not about himself. And he's not, he wasn't born in America. He came here at the age of four, became a citizen. But because of that, he has, you know, sometimes it takes people who weren't born here to really appreciate <laughs> what's here. And he is so concerned right now that the church is not speaking in and not concerned about the socialist stuff that's, that's being talked about and possible. He's going to take a two-month leave of absence to go and try to speak more to people directly in various battleground states. See, sometimes you have to do it scared. You have to do it scared sometimes. In Bonhoeffer's day, the churches did not stand up to what was shifting in the wind. Okay? Now, let's be clear about this. Nobody has the answer, Republican or Democrat. I don't care. Both parties are very screwed up. There's so much things that we each miss. And you know what? We need to do a better job of reconciliation in the races. We've got to do better care of all people. That's here, right? The mandate, the care of the creation. True believers in Jesus who know this came as a gift from the Father have to be those who are most ardent about helping protect it because it's going to be renewed and restored. But meanwhile, he gave Adam and Eve dominion and said, take care of it. Well, what we We've given the ground often away. Years ago, when I was in Washington, D.C., I got to be part, a founding board member of this thing called Businesses for Social Responsibility. The idea was simply this. Government isn't up to do the task. <laughs> you can't do all the programs. Businesses are often in the best position with capital and ability to make decisions to step in and do things. Because the government isn't a fix-all. It needs to govern the free people, but the first thing it needs to make sure it's they keep free. So what are your fear issues? What are you afraid somebody will say, think, do? And here, let me, let me encourage this. Be careful on the social media as far as what you forward. There is so much crazy crap out there. Do not be part of that. But you putting things, praying for the heart of this nation, okay? There's stuff being exposed, folks, left and right. The things are becoming very, very clear, but a lot of people are unwilling to say anything. And this is the biggest concern in my entire time in the U.S. I, I feel like there's some real censorship going on now. And it's not happening from the government. That's what's interesting. We always thought the fear of Big Brother was the government. That, that, that concerns me because... That freedom of speech, folks, is one of the biggest things that's, and you know what? It's being tested in a cancel culture. Okay? So we have to be about war, okay? We got to be clear about how the fight is fought. And you know what? There'll be prices to pay. When you're Caleb and you're coming down like this, by the way, remember what I said about these other light bulbs? As far as I'm concerned, they all had the wiring, which means they were saved. What's the next thing that's going to happen? <laughs> Do you know what this is made to look like, by the way? Do you ever remember those things? with the Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? A largely, this is who needs to wake up. The body of Christ. Okay. And there's a whole slew of people out there. Now, 
there's a challenge because the millennials, a lot of them have just, they have a heart for justice. They have a heart for that. And the church and often current power has not spoken to it well. And so they're just like, they don't they'll have the biblical roots, but there is a call on them that's that part of it, right? That is part of the heart of God is for justice. So wherever else you're engaged in, because a lot of you, we call you double dippers, right? You come here, but then you go somewhere on Sundays, which is great. But if your leadership there is not speaking to this, if they are not speaking out, then you light a fire, please. You pray for them. You send them this list of scriptures and say, I just got to check, are we? I was talking with a brother up north in Atlanta, part of a a very, very large church, and I asked, what's he doing about this? And he's going, what's he saying about it? He goes, nah, he pretty much wants to just stay in the middle of the road. Well, what is it? It is, I, I can't, but I just like, oh, Lord, please stir him up. You see, we need to be the most passionate about racial justice. We need to have a fire. That needs to be coming from the church because they have been made in the image of God. If someone's being harassed because they're gay, we need to get in the fight here, folks. It's about dignity of people. Jesus died for that person. How dare I just back off and, or laugh or what? That's, no. The church lost our legitimacy in that discussion when AIDS hit and we stood back and threw firebrands rather than compassion. The equivalent would have been a leper coming up to Jesus. Ah, you deserved it. Had to be your sin and your generational sin. Go away, you scumbag. Oh, that worked well. Do you understand? This is, this is us. This is our dirty laundry. We have a lot to repent for. If we had been the ones who'd reached out and said, Jesus died for you, and you're in this, I'm so sorry, but I'm here, and I'm willing to risk my life. Kim's father died of AIDS. We get this on a personal level, and nobody wanted to talk about that he had it because it was such a... Yeah. Let's bring it to light. We're going to hold grace and truth. Okay? Enemy tried to take him out a number of ways. Jesus got hold of his life before he lost his life. So now there's more. But the enemy wreaked havoc in it before him. Now, you need to be aware. As we talk to these things, things could happen. There's a thing called the Johnson Amendment, which says that we're not supposed to speak anything political, or lo- or we can. It's well, it hasn't been overturned. It's been suspended right now by executive order, under the president. It's still in place. So let me tell you, there's a lot of those pastors who are afraid to say anything. Okay. And so the reality is, if you make donations here, well, at one point you may not. They may not be tax deductible. Just what it is. Okay. But that is what it is. We have to move in integrity. And you know what? Again, it's the parties drive me crazy. I want to bash their heads together because they both miss it. Because when you try to do it with outside of understanding kingdom, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. We have to be compassionate. We have to be working for reconciliation in the races. We have to be working for the equality. We have to honor each other rightly as people first. And then if you don't agree with me on that, okay, fine. But you don't have to call me this, that, or, and I don't have to call you that. Sorry, I've been talking too much. Are you getting, though, please, grace, truth, hope, honor? Worship, warfare, they're all of a piece. That's the currency 
But we all have this charge in this month to be Caleb. Wherever it is that you're supposed to speak out and take the risk that people are going to pick up stones to throw at you. But I will tell you once again, it wasn't an enemy who went to do that. It was his own people. And that's generally where a lot of the grief will come. Okay. Educate yourselves. Talk to other people. Stay out of the morass. Okay. Don't traffic in something you haven't verified. Don't repeat something that could be a lie. You don't want to be trafficking in that. There's a lot of, and I know it's hard to discern out. You have, took me some work, okay? When I went to try to find out about that organization, I had to make sure I got to the website and I just read everybody else's. I want to see and read for myself. I want to read about this interview from that time. I want to get what's, okay, yeesh, there's some real problems. But I can't throw everything out because meanwhile, the hunger for social, for justice here is valid. Okay. Well, pray for us. Hi, Lauren. Yeah, you want to come and get the mic? Okay. Good to see you. Oh, sorry. Is it turned on? Hold down that green light. You got to hold it. Yeah, you good. Good. Yeah, just talking about it. So I, I was going to share this prior to the message, but I waited. And then I had to be obedient because we just broke off the fear of speaking. And it was just reminding me of a couple years ago when I was working in, as a pediatric nurse in the primary care office. Um, I had kind of gotten silenced because of unprofessionalism, mixing faith and medicine, science, and just different things that I would share. So I was quiet a lot of the times, and I was very disobedient to the Holy Spirit's promptings. Meanwhile, I'm leading and facilitating a ministry for single moms, and I'm trying to share about the goodness of God and the faithfulness of the Lord and everything that I know that God is. But in my heart, I was so conflicted because of what I was seeing every day in that office, from defects cases to molestation to teen pregnancy to abortions in Jacksonville. So I'm over here on, in one aspect in my ministry, in my faith walk with the Lord, and then my professional life, I'm seeing just utter destruction. And I got on my knees one night, and I'm like, Lord, how do I do this? You know, not necessarily to separate the two, because I am a kingdom citizen before I'm a nurse. I'm not a nurse that's a Christian. I'm a Christian that's a nurse. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was just like, Lord, where is your goodness? Where is your mercy? Where is, I don't see this every day, you know? And he literally, it was like a, like a film strip of every single incident when the Lord said, speak that word of comfort, pray for that mom, hold that baby. And I was disobedient because I didn't want to speak out or I didn't want to be unprofessional or get in trouble for mixing my faith and bringing, you know, my, my walk into work. And ever since then, I won't be silent. I can't, I can't separate the two anymore. But with the whole Caleb and speaking, I mean, when we don't speak, it affects other areas of our lives. It's not just even for the people that that word was meant for, but it was interrupting my, my ministry to single moms because I wasn't believing what I was saying with everything that I saw during the day. You know, you got to wonder if there were four more of the ten that went in that decided to speak up with Caleb. whether the nation would have crossed over rather than having to be on a death march for 38 years. We don't know how many it takes to tip the balance, but we're on the brink. What you say, how you say it, where you say it, how you pray, are you praying, are you repenting, are we hammering heaven? This is on our watch. This is on our watch. And yeah, the consequences are huge. Because what happens in America has a trickle out effect. Eric Metaxas wrote a book called If You Can Keep It. It's from a line Benjamin Franklin when they came out of having formed the Constitution. There was a lady 
this is all historically documented, said, well, what have you given us, Mr. Franklin? A monarchy or a republic? And he said this back to her. It was just kind of a quip. A republic, if you can keep it. Father, we're in a warfare season like we've not seen. You're in a good mood. But you're stirring up the hearts of your sons and daughters and calling them up into that Caleb place. Lord, make us all like he was willing to risk he knew what he saw he knew what he believed and then he spoke father we break off any slumber any of that fear of man operating around us we break off spirits of accusation and judgment we cannot will not traffic in that we will hold on to grace and truth they'll light us up each time we will hold on to hope and honor. We will hold on to worship and warfare. And we will spend this currency wisely. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your justice reign. Lord, every, every, every life matters to you. May it also matter to us. In the name of Jesus, amen.